All right, Shalom Akim. This is your brother Karab from GMS Miami. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kwadash, which is to say the name of the Heavenly Father, in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew. I want to give double honors to the elder apostles of the Great Millstone who rule well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And I want to send out a hearty Shalom to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk your lives doing so in efforts of waking up the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. And Shalom to the few sisters as, as well that uh, listen um, in sincerity. Okay, and um, this lesson is pretty much going to be called Warmonger. Okay, and um, well, first let me get into the definition. Warmonger, a person who encourages or advocates aggression towards other countries or groups and the synonyms are militarist, hawk, uh, jingoist, uh, saber rattler, aggressor, provoker, belligerent. Okay. And the reason I'm uh, doing a lesson on this because um, I heard an alarming uh, statistic. Uh, well, not necessarily a statistic, but, um, uh, um, you know, yeah, you could call it a statistic. Uh, and it was that um, pretty much, matter of fact, let's go to it. Here it is, okay. I mean, this is in um, pretty much 2015, but obviously this number is it has to be greater now, okay. And um, and actually, I heard it by um, a, a potential presidential candidate, okay. And it was maybe about two days ago. So this this number is pretty much the same, okay. Um, and it says 54% uh, in fiscal year 2015, military spending is projected to account for 54% of all federal discretionary spending, a total of $598.5 billion, okay? And what this equivocates to is uh, that 54% is basically 54 cents of every taxpayer's dollar, okay? Which is more than half of every dollar that is spent in taxes goes to the military, okay? And that would incite what? That Esau Edom, okay, uh, which is self-proclaimed as the so-called white man, okay, which we know as the nation of Edom, okay, or Esau, um, who is the devil that the Bible speaks of, okay? This would uh, indicate that he is a warmonger, man, okay? Now let's go back to that definition. A warmonger, a person who encourages or advocates aggression towards other countries or groups. Okay, and history, hey, history declares itself, man. Okay, this devil has done nothing, okay, but uh, create war and show aggression to those who do would not conform, okay, to uh, to his to his way of living, okay, which is absolutely left-handed, you know. And um, and ultimately, what it goes back to is that he um that he is um okay that that's his blessing, okay. When you read it, what is that in um? I believe that's Genesis the twenty seventh chapter where it goes into his blessing, okay, and his blessing, okay, given to him by his father Isaac was the fatness of the earth, okay, and also one of his blessings being the sword, okay, and that sword represents any possible way that somebody can be destroyed. Okay, and we know clear. We see clearly. Okay, and um, his um wickedness has been revealed. You know, in the recent years. Okay, and mainly because this devil declares his wickedness. Okay, and he publishes his wickedness. Okay, why? Because he's proud. He's proud at being the devil. Okay, <clears throat> and that's one thing we got to give you, Esau. You proud? Okay. You're proud to be the devil, okay? Or the, the, the man that is uh, sh uh, causing the earth to shake, okay? With your nuclear weapons. You see? But this fits him to the T. You see? Okay, and then, like I said, history uh, 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 declares it plainly, okay? Uh, pretty much going all the way back. Well, well <clears throat> to be technical, going all the way back to Cain, Okay? Okay, which was the pretty much the first, um, the, the, no, I won't even say the first carnation, okay? The first carnation of, 
of the, the devil, okay, or Satan, okay, was all the way back in the garden, which was the serpent, okay, that beguiled Eve, you see? And then the second was uh, Cain, okay, and what did he do? He slew his brother, okay, and then you fast forward to Jacob and Esau, you know, um, and what did Esau say? When my father is dead, I will slay my brother, you see? So war has always been in his mind and in his heart, okay? And ultimately, he was created that way, you see? Okay, but our job is to expose your wickedness, okay? Because you claim to be a, a kind man, a God-fearing man that lives by the Bible, okay? But yet, you send young uh, teenage boys, okay, and, and people who really don't have an understanding of what life is about, you send them off to wars to fight for money and, and, and drugs, okay? And, 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 and uh, ultimately, okay, to do blood sacrifices, okay? And the reason why is because you're a warmonger. <clears throat> you see? It says a person who encourages or advocates aggression towards other countries or groups, okay? And the reason why he does that is because his blessing is the sword or destruction, you see? Okay, and ultimately, the, the, the most high put the spirit Okay, the most I put the spirit upon this devil to create the biggest destroying instrument on the planet, which is the nuclear whistle, uh, Salakia, the nuclear missiles. You see, okay, but um, I got a couple articles here that uh, just you know, pretty much validate that this guy is the devil, and that's pretty much all he focuses on, okay, death and destruction, like it says in uh, John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill. You see? And how was this land founded? Off of theft, murder, robbery, deceit, deception. You see? These are all the attributes of Esau Edom, the so-called, the, the self-proclaimed white man. Okay? Now, let's go into this one. It says, um, and, and pretty much I just Googled, you know, I just Googled um, how many wars that uh, America has been in. Or Salakia, the United States Okay, going all the way back to the Revolutionary War And that number is 12, you see You have the Revolutionary War, the War of 1812 Mexican War, Civil War, Spanish-American War World War I, World War II Korean War, Vietnam War, Persian Gulf War Afghanistan War, Iraq War You see, and the Cold War Okay, and then ultimately They're uh, basically propagating uh, World War Three, which is is, is is soon to kick off, okay? But of course, the uh, issuing of the microchip has to come first, okay? The RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast that the Bible speaks of, you see? But, um, and that, that's his MO, man. He creates order out of chaos, okay? He brings war and um, deception, okay? And uses it as, as a smoke screen to basically issue in uh, 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 a new way of living, Okay? And that's what entails the new world order. The new world order, okay, uh, his plan, okay, or his enterprise is to start a war, okay, and get everybody riled up and, and scared, okay, and then offer them an alternative, which will be the micro microchip. Let's see? Uh, let me see. I got another one here. It says, um, I, I Google biggest military budgets in the world. And it says total mil military expenditure by all 29 North Atlantic Treaty Organization or NATO members was 963 billion in 2018. You see, that was just 2018 alone. It says which accounted for 53 percent of world spending. And that's major, man. More than half of the money spent in the world was uh, 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 spent on military, okay? Now, fact of the matter is, like the saying in the world is, hey, you can't go to war unless your money's right, okay? But when you're dealing with a warmonger who, who's basically flexing his muscles on weaker nations and weaker countries, okay? Um, spending this type of money makes no sense, okay? When you still have people sleeping on the streets here, right here in America, you know, it says the largest absolute increase in spending in 2018 was by, guess who? 
the USA, which was $27.8 billion, while the biggest decrease was by Saudi Arabia, negative $4.8 billion in April of 2019. You see? Now, let's look at this. Um, let's look at this uh, graph here. Okay, it says the bi biggest military budget adds a percent of GDP. Okay. And, um, and yeah, they have Saudi Arabia, Israel, Russia, and America coming in at fourth. Okay. But obviously, Saudi Arabia, Israel, and United States are in cahoots. You see? Okay. And then you got Russia at 3.9. But guess what? The Russians are Edomites as well. Okay. So that's pretty much their spirit, man. Okay. Uh, I think I got one more article here. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, nah, that's pretty much it. Okay, now I'll, I'll get a couple precepts just to edify that. That's all this guy's about, man. And uh, uh, ultimately where that spirit within him originates. You see? Okay, let's get this uh, Psalms 55 and 21. It says, um, verse 19, Psalms 55 and 19. The Most High shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, Salah, because they have no changes. Therefore, they fear not the Most High. Okay, and that's this devil, man. He's so proud that he has set himself up as if he's the Most High. Okay, and then how did ultimately that manifests in these last days with uh, 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 Trump uh, basically saying we're going to make, uh, you know, Jerusalem the headquarters. Okay, and um, him saying, look, I'm like the Messiah. You know, the people, the Israelis should love me. I'm like the Messiah, okay? When, hey, through the spirit of Trump may be a Jew, his, his damn self, man, okay? A Jew so-called, you see? And the reason they do all this is because they fear not the most high, okay? Like the scriptures say, uh, uh, lift not thy, uh, uh, lift not, exalt not thyself and lift not thy horn up on high. And that's exactly what this devil has done. Why? Because his blessing is what? The sword. Okay, and he's went around conquering weaker nations, using aggression, being a warmonger that he is. Okay, and he said, like, hey, you know, ain't nobody coming up against me. So, yeah, I must be God. <laughs> you see, verse 20, he have put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. He have broken his covenant. Okay, and all you have to do is ask Gad and Reuben, which are, the, you know, the North, North American uh, and, and, and Seminole Indians. Okay, every treaty that they made with this devil he broke, okay? That's his MO. That's what he does, you know? <clears throat> it says, uh, verse 21, the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords, okay? And all you have to do with most people is read this precept, okay? Even if they don't have biblical knowledge and ask them to equate who fits this scripture and they'll tell you the so-called white man. Okay? And that's his track record. Record, And the reason we know that's his track record because he documents his wickedness. Okay? He's the devil. Okay? But let's get into... Um, let's get into his, his mind state and his philosophy behind this. Okay? And where this, this sentiment comes from because we already established what his blessing was. Okay? And his blessing is the sword which ultimately was given to him by his father Isaac. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Uh, yeah, this Exodus, Exodus 15 and 3. Okay, it's Exodus 15 and 3. It says, uh, Exodus 15 and 3. It says, Yahweh by Shem Shai is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Okay, so just as Esau is a warmonger, okay, ultimately the creator of Esau and our creator and our father is a war, is a man of war as well. Okay. And the reason I bring out that precept is because it's like, yeah. Mm, yeah. It's because the scriptures say this, Psalm 17 and 3. I started one. A prayer of David. Hear the right, O Yahweh by Shem Shai. Attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer that goeth not out of feigned lips. Verse two, okay? So obviously this is a prayer that King David is making to the Most High. It says, uh, verse two, let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. Verse three, 
Thou has proved my heart. Thou has visited me in the night. Thou has tried me and shall find nothing. I am proposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Okay, now let's jump down to uh, 13. I just wanted to get a little premise on it. This is, uh, let's see. I started eight, Salakia, Psalm 17 and eight. It says, keep me as the apple of the eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings from the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies who can pass me about, okay? And when you correlate, okay, and of course, this is prophet, this is prophetical, okay? But this is also something that King David went through, okay? But when you look at it in these times, okay, because like the scriptures say, there's nothing new under the sun, okay? And we know that the book of Psalms are extremely prophetical. Okay, and this fits to the T what we're going through right now. And this should be our prayer as well. Okay, and it says, from the wicked that oppress me. And who are the wicked? Esau Edom. Okay, alluding to Psalms 9 and 24. I mean, Salakia. Uh, Job 9 and 24. Okay. And it says, um, verse 10. They are enclosed in their own fat, which their mouth, they with their mouth, they speak proudly. Okay. And that's Esau Edom, man, to the T. That's this devil. Speaks proudly. And like I said, because uh, all the wickedness that he's brought forth on the earth, he hasn't been judged for. You see? So like the scripture saying, uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, because an uh, uh, evil uh, sentence has not, uh, roughly paraphrasing, because uh, um, you, you're not judged expe uh, speedily, speedily for uh, wickedness, the 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 the, uh, the mind of the sons of men are setting them to do evil. You see, and that's the spirit that's within Esau. Look, hey, I didn't get checked. I didn't get judged for what I've been doing. All the wickedness that I've been bringing out through the earth. So hey, I you know, the Most High doesn't see me. You know. Um. Verse eleven. Okay, they have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth. Okay, and guess what? They actually have space stations and satellites that watch our every move. Okay, especially the hopefully let. Okay, because we're their biggest adversary. You know, because we can't fight this devil, uh, uh, mano y mano. We can't. It's impossible. They'll crush us, man. Why? Because their blessing is the sword, but our blessing is the kingdom of heaven, man, okay, is 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 that we're the sons of Yahweh by Shem Shai, okay, and they know this, they know this, and they're afraid of that, but they're proud, you see, and like the scriptures say, uh, before a fall, uh, pri before, uh, 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 pride go up before a fall, and that's the case in all situations, you proud, you're going to fall, it says, uh, verse 12, like as a lion that is greedy of his prey, and as it were a young lion lurking in secret places, okay, which this devil does, he's, hey, the word devil means deceit, okay? And that's how he moves. He doesn't come straight forth, okay? And, uh, um, you know, just let you know, hey, this is war, okay? No, nah, he'll have that knife tucked behind his back like we just read in Psalms, the 55th chapter, okay? Words smooth as butter, you know? Speaking all these democracies and, and doing things diplomatically, you know? But they already got the war plan drawn up, you see? And, and Trump says it, you know, we're not looking for war, but, you know, if they want to take that route, we, we can go, you know? And that's pretty much the MO of the so-called white man. It says, um, verse 13, Arise, O Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword, Okay? And, and I was, I'm tying that into the book of Exodus, Exodus 15 and 3, which we just read. And it states that the Most High is a man of war. OK, but here it's saying that the wicked is the heavenly father's sword and the wicked is Esau Edom. OK, and also according to uh, Malachi, the first chapter. OK, the border of wickedness, which is Esau Edom, it says it plainly. You see, so ultimately the reason Esau okay is a warmonger okay is because he's the sword of yahweh by shim Shah. okay to ex execute vengeance upon the wicked okay and ultimately that sword is going to be used to take that devil out you see 
Um, okay, I think I got one more precept. Yeah, we'll close out with this one. One more precept. Okay. And that's why it's going to be epic, man. Because the man who went around crushing the earth, okay, caused the earth to shake, okay? The same uh, 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 wickedness that he's used throughout the earth is going to be brought upon him, okay? Sevenfold, meaning a, a number of completeness. He's going to be destroyed utterly, okay, off the face of the earth for being the warmonger that he is, okay? This is uh, Jeremiah, uh, let's see where we start. This is Jeremiah 50. Yeah, we'll start at 18, uh, 17. It says, uh, Jeremiah 15 and 17, Israel is a scattered sheep. The lions have driven him away. First, the king of Assyria have devoured him. And last, this Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, have broken his bones. Verse 18, therefore, thus saith Yahweh Bashim Yahushua of hosts, the power of Israel, behold, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land as I have punished the king of Assyria. Okay, and both of these names are cold for America. Okay, why? Because this is this uh this uh this scripture is twofold. Okay, this actually happened during the Babylonian captivity. Okay, and it's gonna actually happen against this captivity. Okay, and Trump right now would be considered the king of Babylon. Okay, verse uh, nineteen, and I will bring Israel again to his habitation. Okay, and that and that validates it. Why? Because once the Babylonians were taken out of power and the Assyrians, we didn't go back into the land of Israel. Okay, now we went in to build the temple. Okay, but what what happened? Originally, we we uh, we were scattered away from there again. Okay, it says, um, and I will bring Israel again to his habitation, and he shall feed on Carmel and Bashan, and his soul shall be. Uh, satis uh, satisfied upon Mount Ephraim and Gilead. Verse 20. In those days and in that time, said Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for and there shall be none. You see? And that's clearly talking about the times that are coming. Okay? Future prophecy that hasn't even taken place now. Okay? Showing you that this scripture is twofold. Okay? Because there's still iniquity found amongst the nation of Israel. Okay, it says in those days and in that time, say if you how about Shemiah Shai, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none, and the sins of Judah, and they shall not be found, for I will pardon them whom I reserve. You see? Verse 21. Go up against uh let me see. Yeah. It says, uh, go up against the land of Marathim. Even against it and against the inhabitants of Pekar, waste and utterly destroy after them, saith Yahweh by Shemiah Shai, and to do and do according to all that I have commanded thee. Verse 22. A sound of battle is in the land and of great destruction. You see? And that's uh, obviously speaking about the times that are coming, okay? This third woe that you read about in the book of Revelations. Uh, verse 23, and here's the point. It says, how is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? Okay. And another, in another way, we know this is speaking about future prophecy. Babylon right now today, the ancient Babylon, which is around the Ira Iraq area in the Middle East. Okay. That is, it's not desolate. There's people still living there. Okay. But we know through, uh, through the scriptures. Uh, 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 that America is going to be hit, which is that, that, that great Babylon, okay, the daughter of Babylon that is speaking about here is going to be hit with 200 million nuclear missiles, 200,000 thousand, you see? And that's what's going to make this place utterly desolate, okay? But the point is, it says, how is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations, okay? So ultimately, this warmonger Okay, or this war machine of Esau Edom, okay, is, 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 is referred to as the hammer of the whole earth. Okay, the Babylonians were not the hammer of the whole earth. They were uh, 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 the hammer of the modern world, you see.
Okay, but the the main the main point is that look, it's gonna be broken. Okay, all that all that going around uh, uh, flexing on, on smaller countries. Okay, sitting in lurking places, persecuting the poor, uh, bringing um a death and destruction upon the innocent. It's coming to an end, man. Okay, you've been sought out. We're calling you out. Okay, and now all we have to do is wait on the heavenly Father to come and destroy you. Okay. So, uh, Lord willing, that was edifying. With that, I want to say Shalom.